relatively soon. So with this problem, I just want us to pay attention to the actual question, when is the charge the same? When we're dealing with systems of equations and we're trying to find when something is the same, we're looking for where they meet. And that makes sense because we know that the answer to a solution or a solution or the answer to a system is a point on a graph, right? <clears throat> so we have two catfish farms. Floyd's catfish farm charges a $5 fee to fish plus $2 per pound of fish caught. Miller's catfish farm does not charge a fee to fish, but charges $3 per pound of fish caught. What's already been done for us is we're going to use P for pounds of fish and T for total cost. The other part that is here for us is we have two equations. Which farm does this first equation go with? Does it go with Floyd or Miller? It goes with Floyd. Thank you. Why does it go with Floyd? Because if the total is $5 fee plus two per pound. That means this equation is the Miller farm. The Miller farm is the total equals $3 per pound, right? Let's use our graphic organizer to go through the process of solving a system. When we're using substitution, like we're, we've been practicing, the first thing you want to do is solve one of the equations for a single variable. What do we notice here? They're both already solved for t, aren't they? So let's write in here t is already by itself. I'm going to write the first equation here. I could have used the second equation, it doesn't really matter. But whichever one I didn't use here, I'm going to use here. And because this 5 plus 2p is equal to t, we're going to go and plug it in for the t in the other equation. We're then going to go through the process of finding like terms and solving. This 2p and 3p need to go together. Gets eliminated on this side. And we're left with 5 is equal to 3p minus 2p is 1p, or we could just write it as, one, as p. Now we know one of our variables. We know how, how many pounds of fish makes the cost equal. What do we need to know? We need to know the T or the total. I'm going to go back to this equation and bring it down here. I'm going to take the amount that we found that's equal to P and we're going to plug it into this equation where the P is. And what does that say? The total is equal to 5, that's the $5 fee, plus 2 times $5 per pound. So the solution is both farms charge $15 for catching five pounds of fish.
if you're going to go to these farms and catch five pounds of fish, it doesn't matter which farm you go to, it's going to be the same. But because one charges a higher amount per pound and the other charges a low amount per pound but a fee, you had, would then be able to look at a graph and determine which farm is a better deal if you only want two pounds of fish. Which farm is a better deal if you want 20 pounds of fish? The lower price per fee with the fee on top of it, or the lower price per pound with the fee, or the just flat rate of $3 per pound? All right, let's do the more challenging, and then this is going to be the end for today. Um, why is this one more challenging? Because it has decimals we have to multiply. The math just looks kind of ugly and messy, and I, I'm finding I have to write really tiny to get things fitting in these boxes. So this is very similar to the problem we did when we watched that video of the coin sorter last Thursday. Hannah has $11.20 in a jar that contains only nickels and dimes. There are 140 coins in the jar. How many of each coin does Hannah have? That's the question we're trying to answer. The let statements are done for us. We're going to let N be nickels and let D be dimes. The equations in the system are done for us. N plus D equals 140 is just counting them. When I count up my nickels and I count up my dimes, I get 140 coins. But because these coins have a value, the second equation is saying however many nickels they are, a nickel is 5 cents. A dime is 10 cents, and when I count them up and multiply them by their value, I get $11.20. That's what this equation is saying. So we're going to follow our same process. We want to solve for a single variable. In this case, neither one of these is solved for a single variable. This is the easier equation to work with. So let's start with it here, and let's say we're going to solve for D. I could solve for nickels, I chose to solve for dimes, it doesn't matter, you just pick one. Because I want to solve for D, that means I need to move the N away. Now I have to take the second ugly equation, and I'm calling it that because of all these decimals in it. It's just a mess to write. We're going to rewrite it down here, as is. We're going to substitute this in for the D in this equation. I find I have to write really small to get everything to fit on this space. My next step is to multiply this, death, this 10 cents times the parentheses. And then I'm going to combine these two like terms with the nickel. Yes, I know I'm going fast, but I am also watching the clock on this day with our shorter classes. I'm going to then subtract the 14 to get this term with the nickel by itself. And now I'm dividing by that 0 0.05, but it's a negative one. 
which is good because both sides are negative and that's going to give us a positive number. And as I run out of room, I'm finding that nickels is equal to 56. I now know that there are 56 nickels. Since that's the case, I can go back to that original equation. And instead of writing, oops, let me just write it out. Nickels plus dimes equals 140. And I'm going to put this 56 in where the nickels are. And then I'm going to solve for the dimes. And there's our solution.